what's happening you all yeah we back again the cold water cold the company water cooler yeah so remember to like subscribe comment and share we're not financial advisors but this is for educational purposes only and the first thing that we're about to talk about is is now a good time to double down on ETFs. Chris, yes, sir. what yes, you got sir. to say? Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, thank you. We appreciate you so much. That is Leroy. I am Chris. This is the company Water Cooler. We appreciate you for joining us. Is now the best time to double down on ETFs? It could be. Um, and the only reason that I say that is because the market is still... All the analysts are saying the market still has a way to go, a way to fall before it bounces back. So Apple right now was at 138 and some change down from 150 something a few weeks ago, which is obviously down from 180, whatever. Obviously, Apple will recover as Apple to a trillion dollar valuation. No need to worry. But an ETF right now is going to provide you that padding right? Because you're diversified. Now, of course, if you are in a portfolio that is all tech, the way that tech goes is the way your ETF goes. If you're all in finance, the way that finance goes, your ETF goes, so on and so forth. But if you're in an ETF that has, or if you're in an index fund, you have a broader range of companies that you're invested in. And of course, these are, more, these are safer anyway, right? So your ETFs and your index funds are going to be safe for investments because you'll have Apple and Walmart and Coca-Cola and Pepsi and UPS all in the same one compared with TQQQ that has Apple, Microsoft, Google, you know, all of the tech stocks, right? And then a couple sprinkled throughout that are a small, small percentage of it. So even if they do exceptionally well, your portfolio is not going to see a 20 or 30 point increase. But ETS is always a good option, obviously, because it is that basket of companies. You don't have to choose between the best performing companies. You can get them all in a basket and you can put your money behind that. Is it the best time to double down on it? It could be. And I know I said that three times now, but I, and I keep going back to that because you you have that range and we're approaching holiday season we're approaching makeup season right we got to cover ground from that we lost from the rest of the year so obviously if you're in these stay in them do not if you stay in them double down yes for the holiday season especially because retail is about to go up I haven't looked at the numbers this year, but typically Americans spend between six and seven billion dollars a year uh, during Halloween on candy alone. Um, so I don't think it, I don't think it was that different this year. Maybe not a whole lot of people ate the candy, but all the moms and dads bought them. So you know we're gonna be snacking on Halloween candy till Black History Month. So get, if you're in an ETF, stay in there, do your thing. If that's what you're invested in and you're thinking about going to single shares, maybe pulling a company out from the ETF or the ETFs that you're invested in, it needs to be top 10 company. If it's not that, keep investing in that ETF and stay there and double down in that. That's your double down option. If you're in an ETF or you're in multiple ETFs and you don't have any single shares in your portfolio, stay in that double down on that. But if you've got some single shares, and you got an ETF or you got a couple of ETFs, let's say you got a portfolio of eight and two are ETFs and the other six are single individual companies. Put more, you can put a, sort of uh, even the playing field. So if it's 70, 30, single company, single share to ETFs, take it to 60, 40. Just increase your amount if that's your situation. If you're already in it, double down. 
if you're in it, but you also have single shares, that means you've done some research on these companies so you know, just increase the volume. Increase your investment amount. And also, too, when Chris said that ETFs are a little more safer than um, single stocks, because, you know, the single stocks, whenever, you know, it hits uh, for single stocks, they actually decrease um, more than ETFs. Uh, so ETFs, basically, they don't decrease as much as a single stock will um, decrease. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, and the beta on those is lower. So the beta is the number that's going to tell you the volatility of a company. Um, traders know, but anything beneath a one is low volatility is good. Anything above that is going to be a little risky. So if you have a company that's at 0.85 beta, that means it's not as, that means it's a, a good company to invest in because it's not, as, I mean, obviously you look at, the revenue, you look at the debt to income ratio, you look at everything else. But in looking at the beta, you'll see, oh, okay, this company is not so volatile and all these other factors work. Boom, I can invest my money in that. If your portfolio was 100% Apple and you bought Apple at $188 January of 2022, right now, you like, should I sell? Should I get out? Because Apple is at 138 right now. So $50 per share has gone down. And you like, wait a minute, but I just put all this money in Apple and I'm losing. You're not, and you don't, you do not lose money until you pull the money out of your brokerage. Apple could go down to $2 tomorrow, which it will not do. The week after that, Apple could go up to $300. Had you sold, when it went down to two, then yes, you just lost $178 because you sold less than what you bought. Patience is key. If ever a company is down and you know it's good, you've done your research, or someone is telling you that it's good and they know because they've done the research, right? That man just told you Apple is a good investment. He knows what he's talking about. Stay invested in Apple. Turn off all your notifications and your news. Just cut it off and come back to it in three months. And I promise you, you'll be happy that you did that because you go, oh, okay, okay. There was a whole bunch of craziness in the news about this. And the CEO did that. And I heard that some, I heard that some of them was exploding. Oh man, I can't believe. Cut off the news. Cut off all notifications about Apple. Come back in three months. And Apple is going to be at 190. And you're going to go, oh, okay, okay. All right, who all I had to do was just be patient and wait. The market has an upward trend throughout its entire history of existence, right? The, the entire history. So stay invested. Do not, don't, if, if it's a good company, solid company, management is great. Low debt to no debt. They're making a lot of money. They have a, a, a lion's share of the market or a monopoly on the market. Stick with it. All right, you all. Now we're about to actually talk about what is the significance of a cashless society. Chris. Yeah. What's up, man? Yeah. So that one is um that wasn't that one is an interesting one. And I know we mentioned it before, but we're starting to see more of it now. So when you go to Walmart. You have the sub-checkout lines that are, I mean, and obviously sub-checkout is, you know, for convenience. But when you go to these retail locations and you are paying cash, you are being penalized for it. You go to Walmart and you want to pay cash, you got to wait a line an hour and a half because you know it's only one line open. Everybody want to go to the sub-checkout, but then when they get there and they realize they can't pay with cash, it's like, oh, so then I got to go. They got to go all the way over to the line to pay with cash and wait an hour and a half. It's 40 registers. It's only two open. Target is no different. Um, none of the retailers are any different because they want you to check yourself. They want you to go around the store, shop for what you need, and check yourself out. So they can get rid of the workers there so that's less money that they have to pay so they can put more money into the store. Right outside of wages. That's just money that they can save. You think about it when you own a business, 
your number one focus is saving money. You want to make as much money as possible while spending as little as possible. That's the whole point of owning the business. The significance mm -hmm. of a cashless society is not having the ability of anonymity. You don't have the ability to go make a purchase and someone not know what you bought, right? That's the whole, and you know, these companies want to know what you're buying because like we mentioned before, that's information, that's data. See, I don't want you to live in a society where you can make a purchase with something and I don't know what you bought because you use cash. I don't want that because I don't know what to sell to you. I don't know what to market to you. But a cashless society where you the, your, the chip that's on your card, right? A cashless society allows me to track every single purchase that you make and market every single thing that you bought back to you. That's what it allows me to do. So that's the significance of a cashless society is getting rid of the thing that takes away your privacy. It takes away your anonymity. Because if you take $100 out of your bank today and you go to the grocery store and you spend 20 and you go and you put 20 in your tank and you go and you eat, you spend 20 eating out and you go and you buy some screwdrivers with the other 20 and you take the other 20 and go buy some socks. The cameras in the store see you going in there to do that, right? But they have no way to attach that to you because it's not, the numbers on currency that we have, that, what is that? That's just, that's just the bill. Number. That's not the number for me, right? That sequence is not for me. So it's not traceable to me. So look out for companies pushing. This is why now they started to offer Afterpay. They started to offer Clarina. They started to offer, uh, I think Zelle does it. But the layaway, the online version of layaway, Right. So you don't have to pay a hundred dollars right now. You can just pay four installments interest free of twenty five dollars. That's trackable because on your second or third payment, right before you're about to pay off that debt, what are they going to do? Here's an email for 10 percent off. Here's an email for 20 percent off data information. They see, oh, man. OK, Leroy, he, he OK, he got it. He got two pair of shoes on Afterpay. It's going to take him, he signed up for the four installments because it's it's layaway with a twist. Layaway used to seem like it takes forever. You had some on layaway for four years, just forever. Back in the day, you get layaway, like, hey, man, we're going to pay off this couch when we pay it off. And they were just like, all right, right? Because <laughs> that's how they, it was crazy, right? But now it's like, no, you got four payments and you got to pay it in a month. So every week, we're going to need $25 from your ass. Now, it's because we, can because we can freeze your whole account. We can shut all of that down because we know who you are. We have that data. We have that information. But Leroy just spent $200 on shoes. He got two pair of nights for 200 bucks, and he used Afterpay. Leroy signed up to have four payments of $50 a week. On that second week, on that third week, Leroy can expect an email. He can expect a notification. Hey, I know you almost done making the payment on that. Why don't you go into some more debt with us and get another hundred dollar pair of shoes, man? Listen, we'll give you this ten off. We we'll give you this twenty five off. As a matter of fact, first payment is on us. You just pay seventy five. And so, data, information, marketing, and Leroy might go, "Well, hell, if I get, I got two pair for two hundred, I can get the third pair for seventy five. And my payments is going to be, man, let me go ahead and sign up for that. It's a revolving door. It keeps you coming back. And now, with it not being cash-based, with it being digital, now Leroy can do that with not only Nike, he can do that with, um, hell, you got You can do that with anything. I just tried, you can do it with hotel rooms. I had no idea. You can do that with hotel rooms. You can do that with various clothing companies. You can do, they about to start making it the way you just come in every week, put a little bit on your groceries. Like all of this is about having data and information on you to be able to see and be able to predict what you're thinking and what you're going to go buy before you go buy it. So pay attention to all of this shift in the tech that's happening right now with everything being transferred over to card and cash being deemed over with. 
Mm. That's what's up. Wow. Yeah, man. It's the history behind. I mean, yes, the dollar is, you know, value less. But we give the dollar value. But I'm, this is what I say. Yes, the dollar ain't worth nothing. But if I showed up to your door tomorrow with a million dollars cash, you're going to take it. So it still holds some value, right? But so we can't say it's val. We can't say it's not valuable 100%. What we can say is bread goes from $2 to $4, but wages go from, you know, wages only increase 2%. And inflation is 4% or 10% or whatever it is, and it doesn't match, then obviously we know the value of the dollar is decreasing because wages are increasing, yes, but the cost of things are increasing more. Mm. And so if your wage increases by 1%, 2% every year, but inflation is 4% every year, depending on what your base salary is, you're not keeping up with the rate of inflation and the cost of things. So be mindful of that when you are spending your money. So definitely be aware. Okay, okay. I do all. Now is favorite of the week. Chris, I'm gonna let you go first. Oh, you okay? All right. Because I, I don't want to make sure. I remember <laughs> I went <laughs> and I stole some of your. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Pick. Okay. So I want to make sure you get yours in. Got you. Got you. you know, I appreciate you, sister. Uh, I appreciate uh, you. So, my first one, you know, it's the end of the year. It's retail season. Walmart. Let's get it done. I overheard a conversation last week. Uh, a couple of ladies were complaining about the service at Walmart. But we can all agree that the service is subpar. However, you're still going to go shop there because the prices are great. And Walmart is working on Walmart is working on so many things right now. They don't have to have good service. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we don't have to have good service because we're Walmart. So Walmart is my number one. And I'm going to follow that up. I'm going I'm to sneak Target in there because it's the opposite end. People will go to Target because Target, women especially, women love Target. They'll go into Target because the service is great, because the return policy is great, because they can find what they need. And honestly, walking into Target, Target gives me this, uh, like this, this consignment, like this bougie consignment shop. See, and consignment shops are usually bougie anyway. But Target gives me that when I walk into the store, I might see a brand that I don't recognize, but I want to get it anyway, just because it looks upscale. Like, oh man, I, I think I need to have that, right? But that, that's the vibe. And they know what they're doing. They got psychologists that they're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to say, okay, well, how should the lighting go? And how should we position this and position that? So they know what they're doing. But I'm a sneak target in there just because uh, people really, women really love shopping at Target and yeah. women run the finances in the household. So I'm a sneak target in there. My second, I'm going to go with Apple because even though Apple right now is down, they still making money. Apple is just printing money. And I just saw an article mm -hmm. that they're going up on the prices of iPhones. Oh, people are going to stay But die. not for, oh, yeah, 100%, but not for U.S. or China customers. So they're going to leave their two biggest markets out on a price hike and charge everybody else for it. It's beautiful. It's a lovely plan. Number three, I'm going to go with Tesla because um, this energy thing is crazy. And, I mean, it's, there's, there's always a battle over energy because we need everything that we use. Like, we... <laughs> The human species is so energy driven, it's crazy. The amount of energy that we need as a species to survive is astronomical. It's just, it's crazy. It really is crazy. Mm. So, and, and Tesla is definitely working on some cool technology to at least get people involved and interested in energy. 
they're not doing anything new. They're not doing anything. They just got a cool CEO, right? Um, mm -hmm. And he's doing he's doing what he wants. He's doing whatever, which is hilarious. It's amazing. Like he snaps his fingers the wrong way, and you know everybody's in an uproar. But he he's 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 a good leader, right? And he's yeah. he he has a good vision for the company, and he understands a whole lot about what he like he understands a lot he's one of the men shaping the future so he has to understand a lot more than the average joe walmart apple tesla all right so my first one i'm going with is xly all right so i'm giving you all etl <coughs> which has Walmart in there. It has Tesla in there. It has Amazon in there. All right. <laughs> so we got these companies inside this ETF. XLY. Boom, put a dot in it. My next ETF is XLK, which is the technology ETF. And uh, we've mentioned these ETFs before um, to you all. Um, and XLK has Microsoft in there, it has Apple in there, it has um, Alphabet is in there, Google, yeah. Google in there, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, they're hitting with this particular, you know, ETF with technology. All right. Mm -hmm. My last one is going to be XLP. All right. So XLP has mm -hmm. Coca-Cola in there. Mm -hmm. It has Pepsi in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So it has um, some pretty big companies in the ETF that I actually mentioned. Um, and XL, XLP is actually the consumer staples um, ETF. Yeah. Um, and so let me uh, just take a look here real quick to see. Okay. Look out for those XLs. The XLY, XLK, XLP, XLE is energy. Uh, XLF is banking. Mm. That's the finance. And then they have, but those are, those are good ETFs because these are, these are like passively managed ETFs. So when you look at an ETF like ARKK or any of the ARKs, those are actively managed by Kathy and the ARK Invest Group. But when you look at something like an XL, you know, XLI, the industrial uh, ETF, those are based off the S&P 500. You know, they pull from that, mm -hmm. boom, put the money in, and then you can invest in it that way. But those are passively managed. So they don't have, now obviously they have leadership and management, but those are the, the best companies in that sector mixed with some other things. Right. And then so XLP also has Prop, Proper and, and Gan, Gander. Gamble, oh, Proper and Gamble, yeah. Um, in there also, too. It also has Walmart in there, too. In that one, too. Can't go wrong. Yeah, so, um, so those are my three. XLY, XLK, and XLP. Yeah. All right. So, That's a bet. I wasn't looking over your shoulder this time, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see my angels back here with me. I got okay. you. I got you. Yeah, they with me. They always mobbing with me. They stay mobbing with me. They got my back. Oh, That's yeah. why they're behind. Yeah. So, all right, you all, like, subscribe, comment, and share. The co-op co. Yow. Peace. See y'all.